Hi, I'm Laura Nelson. I am a veterinarian and I currently serve as the Associate Dean and Director of Academic Affairs at NC State's College of Veterinary Medicine. I wanted to be a veterinarian probably starting somewhere in late elementary school. I loved animals and uh, particularly baby animals and thought maybe I wanted to be a zookeeper until I found out that the really cool stuff that people did to help take care of the sick baby animals was the veterinarians and not the zookeepers and so I thought that sounds pretty good. Um, and that was probably as close as I got to actually working at a zoo. Um, my family had dogs and um, I really uh, loved having pets growing up and uh, also grew up in the country in northeastern Ohio, which meant that I got to go outside a lot and um, see animals in the wild and uh, catch frogs and really kind of learn to appreciate uh, how animals live not only in domestic settings when we have our pets and livestock and so on, but also how animals live in the natural world. And so I really loved animals and I really loved biology and I loved ecosystems. And that was a good foundation to think about a career in veterinary medicine. One of the hard things about wanting to be a veterinarian, I've found anyway, is that people will spend a lot of time telling you how hard it is to get into veterinary school. And while I wouldn't say it's easy, it's certainly not impossible. So I think if you're interested in it, I hope that you'll pursue it and kind of just dismiss some of the people that, that say no. Um, I, after a while, I heard it enough, I thought, you know, someone's gonna get into vet school and I might as well put my name in the hat because if I don't apply, it's sure not gonna happen. So in middle school and high school, most of what I did to prepare to be a veterinarian was just enjoy science classes. Um, I was involved in science fair, but that's far from a requirement. Um, I took all the biology and science classes my high school offered, which weren't that many. And um, I spent a lot of time running track and cross country. So I hope there what you can learn is that um, you know, it's great to think about what you want to be after high school, after college, um, but, you know, please take time to enjoy the experience that you're in right now. I um, was planning to go to college because I knew that college was part of becoming a veterinarian, and I looked at a lot of different colleges, and in the end, I ended up going to Ohio State in part because I was able to get a scholarship there. And uh, wasn't expecting to go to a university that big, but um, at Ohio State, as with many colleges and universities like NC State or Duke or UNC, um, really loved um, getting to take the, just the amount of classes you could take. There were so many different things I could explore and take and learn. Um, I chose to major in zoology because um, it had zoo right in it. Well, not really, but it's, it's, it's about animals. And so I, I thought it was really interesting to learn about different life cycles. Um, what I learned in zoology, which I probably knew before but really didn't realize, is that most animals are not vertebrates. And which is to say that if you're a zoology major, you're going to learn a lot about worms, um, which uh, is actually fascinating. And a lot about invertebrates and all the different kinds of phyla um, that make up the, the, animal, the animal kingdom, as it were. So um, during undergrad, and I want to emphasize that there's not a specific major that anybody would need to pursue to become a veterinarian. Um, my husband's a veterinarian, he was a physics major. I've worked with veterinary students who have backgrounds in acting, who are military veterans, who were engineers, who were English majors, who um, had any number of experiences before deciding that they wanted to pursue a career in veterinary medicine. Veterinary admissions is usually not a major so much as completing a certain, uh, certain quantity of classes or certain kinds of classes that give you the foundation to pick up the, the topics and subjects that will be covered in vet school. So the most important of those are probably biology, chemistry, and microbiology because they really give you the language to understand how cells work, how um, the bacteria that live within us and around us work, and uh, just to know the science that, they're, that vet school is going to build on. Um, equally important, although somewhat less expected, writing classes and communications classes and history and literature and the things that help you learn about the society that you'll practice in. You know, when I was an undergraduate, when I was a college student, I took all those things because they were part of my major requirements, but I'm not sure I realized how important that they would be 
Um, veterinarians take care of animals. We advocate on behalf of animals, but we do all of that in the context of the society that we live, right? And so the more we understand that society, the more we're able to communicate effectively with people that we work with and people who, who we serve by taking care of their animals or their livestock, um, the more effective we are. And so there's also requirements for communications and humanities courses and so on uh, for admission. And veterinary admission requirements will differ somewhat from school to school. There's usually a math requirement. Uh, for me, it was calculus, but I think most schools are, are, are don't require actually as much math as they used to. Um, but there are other requirements that you would need to meet depending on the school. And there are lots of resources out there to help define exactly what admissions criteria veterinary schools have. And I'll also say that we have reevaluated admissions criteria quite a lot. And so the likelihood is the things that are required for admission to College of Med right now will be different in five or six years. And so, you know, it's something to keep an eye on if you're thinking about pursuing that path. So um, the other reason I chose by uh, zoology is that I thought that if I didn't uh, end up becoming a veterinarian, that I would be a teacher because I loved science and I thought being a biology teacher would be pretty awesome. And I still think it'd be pretty awesome. And one of the ways I've been very lucky in my life is that I became a veterinarian who ultimately became a veterinary educator. So I teach veterinary student surgery right now. And so I felt like I got to kind of get a bit of the best of both worlds um, for me right now. But again, um, you know, I think it's also important to think about, you know, when you're in college, even if you have a goal to go to med school or vet school, um, to realize that there's lots of paths to a really interesting career and um, to try to be open to different experiences that appeal to you. I know a lot of people that went to school to become veterinarians that ended up becoming something different and are delighted with it. They didn't fail to become veterinarians. Um, they found another path that they liked better and that's great. Um, and I know lots of people who went to college to do something completely different and decided to become a veterinarian. So again, um, I hope you'll keep your mind open and consider lots of career paths. I don't want to dissuade you from thinking about a career in vet med, but you know, more than anything, uh, life is exciting and full of uh, interesting things to do. And I, I hope you'll keep your mind open. So I think the biggest shock of starting vet school for me was going from a very small high school, I graduated with 120 students, to a very large university to vet school with was a very small class. So um, most vet schools um, have between 70 and 200 students per class. Um, vet school is generally four years in duration. And so you spend a lot of time with those people. And that is both amazing because they are some of the most interesting people that I've ever met are the people that I went to vet school with and the people that our current students in veterinary school. So lots of different backgrounds and um, experiences and perspectives and ages and everything you can imagine um, has been, was I learned a lot from my classmates. Um, but uh, you also spend a lot of time with those classmates taking a lot of classes. So one of the hard things I find when students start veterinary school, which I experienced as well, is that it's a little, it feels like drinking from a fire hose. There are so many terms you have to learn. There's so much language you have to learn just to understand the next thing. You have to know these terms so you can even understand that lecture you're gonna get next semester. And so there's a lot of learning and that can feel pretty threatening to people that are, are used to feeling pretty comfortable in science classes because there's just a huge volume of information they have to learn. And then once, uh, once students learn that information, then we start having them solve problems. And so um, veterinary medicine, like all medicine, is using biology and facts and what we know about things, but then using that information to solve problems. And there are not always problems that there's one right answer to. And so it's um, animals and people and any biological system is really complicated. And so it's learning about, okay, what does that look like in this animal? And if this is happening, what does that mean? Does it mean there's something wrong with the kidneys? Um, does it mean that there's something wrong with the bladder? Uh, just, is that interacting with something else that could be going on? There's a lot of thinking that goes into diagnosing diseases and that can be, that can be a hard thing to learn. Um, our students take um, a lot of subjects. 
Um, they study anatomy, which is the structure of animals. They study physiology, which is the function of animals. Um, and those, those go together. Um, but there's a lot to learn in those things because it turns out that biological systems are amazing, but they're complicated. So a lot of time learning that. They learn about the microbiome. We, um, all, we're, we're learning this in our, our own selves a lot now, but we've always known that many of our animals have really, really important bacterial populations and microbial populations that live in their gut and on their skin. And if those uh, become damaged or become abnormal because of some disease process, that could really hurt them. And so we learn a lot about normal, um, bi normal microbiota. And also we learn about, um, you know, bad bacteria and parasites and, and the kinds of pathogens and viruses and bacteria that can cause illness in animals and how to recognize and diagnose those things. Uh, we learn about how to use diagnostic tests because um, even if you know all the science in the world, um, diagnostic tests like looking at blood work or uh, looking at an x-ray are ways that we gather information from our patients to understand how their biology is working at that moment so that we can understand how to then prescribe treatment or to tell a client or owner what the prognosis or the likelihood is that the pet or animal is going to get better. And so a lot of diagnostic work, um, they, we come right back to communication and all of our students take communication and business courses because we know that uh, be, to be a veterinarian is to, in, to talk to people on behalf of animals as much as it is to take care of that animal by itself. Um, we study, our students study epidemiology, which is study of, the, of disease and populations. And that could be um, diseases like cancer that aren't necessarily spread from patient to patient, but might be uh, related to the environment but also to how disease spreads between, between animals within a population and between humans and animals. And as we're experiencing right now, um, animals can be important reservoirs for diseases, viruses particularly, that will eventually affect humans. And so there's a really important public health role in, um, in veterinary medicine. And a, a very simple example of that is rabies vaccines. Um, if you have a cat or dog, they probably needed to have a rabies vaccine at some point in their life. And the reason for that is that by vaccinating our cats and dogs, we protect ourselves because if our cats or dogs um, are exposed to rabies from a, a skunk or a raccoon or a bat or some other vector in the wild, then they're not going to give us that disease. And so um, that might seem like it's for our pets and it is, but it's also part of public health because we're, we're creating a barrier between um, ourselves and, and wild populations by, by vaccinating our pets. And so there are lots of ways those things interact. And then the last bit of vet school is really students putting it all together. So um, doing procedures, again, I mentioned before, I teach surgery. So uh, we teach sur uh, students how to hold instruments and tie knots and do basic procedures so that they're able to, to do the common surgical procedures that veterinarians do. And, and as they go forth, you know, uh, get to the more advanced portions of their training, um, they're functioning as veterinarians, really, where they're taking histories, they're doing examinations, they're interpreting diagnostic testing, um, they're helping to deliver treatment. And it is, um, it is challenging. Um, one thing I can say about my vet school, and I think this is the case for pretty much all vet schools, is that we take a lot of care of our veterinary students and really uh, we want all of our students to succeed once they're admitted and so we offer a lot of support academically but also a lot of support personally to make sure our students succeed um, while they're with us and once they graduate. So I'm in a funny job right now because I, um, I help run a vet school and so I oversee the curriculum at the College of Vet Med at NC State and still have a teaching role in surgery. But for most of my career, I worked as a small animal soft tissue surgeon. So after I gradu graduated from veterinary school, I did a one-year internship and then a three-year residency program to become a board certified uh, small animal surgeon. And that is not what most people do. There are about 1,500, 1,600 uh, specialty surgeons in the world. And so it's not a very common path that people take. But in talking about that, and illustrate there are a lot of different ways to be a veterinarian. So I'm a surgeon. There are specialties in lots of disciplines uh, from ophthalmology to behavior to nutrition to medicine and oncology and um, 
uh, radiology, there, there are lots of different smaller disciplines, pathology um, in veterinary medicine, but there are also lots of industries that veterinarians work in. Uh, veterinarians work in pharmaceutical industry, they work in um, pet food industries, they work as scientists and research scientists and epidemiologists, and they work for the government, they work in food safety, they work for the military. So there's lots of areas uh, where veterinarians play very, very important roles because of the specific training we have. And then probably most familiarly, lots of veterinarians work in, in first opinion practice. So really is the first lines um, of, of care for, uh, for pets, for service animals, for animal shelters, for, uh, for livestock, um, both in larger, uh, more commercial production animal systems as well as small farms. Um, something's wrong with your, your animal, you're gonna call the vet. And so most vets work in, in those, those industries and fulfill a very, very important role in our society. Um, one of the things I like the best about being a veterinarian is how many different branches of the, of the field there are. There's lots and lots of places you can go, lots of ways that you can work as a veterinarian, and also the opportunities that veterinary medicine affords for people to change the emphasis of their career as they go on. So say you're interested in companion animal practice, and then you become more interested in business. And you know, I'd kind of like to open a practice and try some new business models and see um, see what I can do to open another practice or try some different management strategies. There are opportunities uh, for veterinarians to continue to learn, um, to become expert in other areas as they go. So it's a profession that you can grow in. Um, there's a lot of flexibility to explore different kinds of being a veterinarian, even within one career. So it doesn't even mean that this is something you have to choose in vet school and then you're that kind of vet forever. Many of my vet school classmates and students I've worked with um, have started in one area of vet med and then changed to another. So I started in this and then I became really interested in acupuncture or dentistry or practice ownership or um, leadership development and have now developed practices in those areas. And so um, it's a pretty wide open field that way and it's a very exciting place to be when you can really um, write, write your own story with the degree that you have. Um, in my practice environment, and what, what surgeons do, um, often work at specialty hospitals, so I've worked at universities for my career. Um, I was at Michigan State and Ohio State before coming to NC State. And um, so we, uh, most surgeons work in larger practices, practices where there are other specialists and there are emergency departments and maybe other, uh, other, other specialty groups that they can collaborate with and take care of often the most challenging cases that veterinarians would see. So if a veterinarian is seen um, by their family veterinarian and they have a tumor or an emergency or they're very, very ill, then they might be sent to an emergency or specialty clinic. And um, if needed, then they would call a surgeon to evaluate a patient and we would then provide care. And so that's given me the opportunity to um, I uh, get to apply what I know about science and physiology and anatomy to um, use my surgical skill to um, take care of animals in really innovative ways. So everything from ear, nose, and throat surgery to cancer surgeries to orthopedic surgeries to gastrointestinal surgery, reproductive surgery, um, you know, we've gotten, we, we get to do a lot of really interesting things and we always learn and it's never boring. And so um, I've really enjoyed getting to do that in my career. Um, the other thing that I think is really has been very satisfying about my career is that I worked in universities and I got to teach veterinary students. So I got to be a veterinarian who was practicing, but I also um, got to be somebody who was training people alongside me um, to become successful veterinarians themselves, and that's been very, very rewarding. Some of the hard things about being a veterinarian, um, it's a lot of time to be a vet, you know, even if you can uh, get through undergrad maybe a little faster than normal, it's still a, in a seven to eight year proposition. And uh, if you pursue training after veterinary school, that might be another three to four years, four to five years, depending on what you want to do. So um, it can be quite a lot of time spent in school and in training. Um, the um, sometimes vet med, depending on the field you're in and how senior you are, sometimes it doesn't pay as well as other medical professions relative to the amount of training uh, provided, even though it provides a lot of flexibility and interest and it's a very important job. And so that can be a, a hard thing sometimes if you've been in school for a long time and have a lot of loans. Um, I think the other hard thing about being a veterinarian is that most of us 
don't go into the profession um, because we want to uh, be famous and make a lot of money. It's a, uh, it's a kind of profession that we go into because we're really interested in it, because we care about the work that we do. And um, I think one hard thing about working in healthcare, I think regardless of the species that you're taking care of, is that sometimes things don't go the way you want them to. Um, a patient will get sicker instead of better. Uh, patients will die. Um, and not only is the relationship with us and that patient, we always want to help, we always want to do well. Um, but having to have hard conversations with owners can be really challenging sometimes too, which again comes back to the importance of communication training because it's really important to be able to uh, be able to come for clients and be able to communicate clearly and effectively um, when necessary. But it can be a hard job when you've had a day and your, your, your cases haven't gone well or you're not sure why something happened. Those can be really tricky. Um, I, I hope that this has helped you think about a career in veterinary medicine. Um, additional resources to think about as you form this opinion. So um, there are, I would, I would advise you to go to the websites for the American Veterinary Medical Association. So that's www.avma.org has resources for pre-veterinary students or people who are interested in veterinary medicine. And you can learn a little bit more about the requirements of vet med, as well as some of the different career fields. And I've mentioned some of them, but certainly not all of them. Um, another resource is the American Association of Veterinary Medical Colleges, which um, runs the admissions portal. And so there's a wealth of information through that website, which is www.aavmc.org. Um, and they have a lot of information about requirements and things that, that students can do or prospective students can do um, as they're starting to think about how to get ready to apply to veterinary school, what the requirements are, um, and a lot of information about the industry too. So I, I think it's always smart to look at what the kind of jobs are that are out there um, and how, you know, what are the things that help make veterinarians successful um, as they go into different professions. And that I, I think you should do no matter what you're thinking about doing is think about, okay, kick the tires a bit, learn about it, understand, um, you know, what, what interests you and um, understand, you know, what the, what the time and cost of it's going to be. Uh, I guess in closing, I... I think being a veterinarian is one of the most interesting and uh, fascinating careers that you could have. There are so many different ways of being a veterinarian. Um, I have been a veterinarian for 17 years, and in that I've gotten to be a learner and a teacher and a surgeon, and I've gotten to do research and I get to teach and I get to uh, now talk to veterinarians about curricula and learn about the industry and bring that back into the work that I do. and. Um, you know, I have friends who've done absolutely amazing, wonderful things as well. So there are lots of ways to do this job. Uh, there are lots of really interesting paths that surprise me even now that, um, you know, some of us get to do the work we get to do. And um, so it's, it's a neat job to do. It's rewarding and it's really, really important. And um, I'm excited to uh, hopefully see some of you guys at NC State in, uh, in some years from now. So thank you so much. <laughs>